Hi, this is Gregory Pavlidis for Professorate.com, and today we're going to be speaking about gold, gold piece. In light of all the turmoil regarding the economy here in the U.S. and worldwide, there has been much talk about gold as a safe haven in which to invest one's money. I cannot and will not give advice about what to do. However, I will outline some key points and give a basic overview of gold IRAs and what gold means as a place to convert one's cash. First of all, a gold IRA is a self-directed IRA which allows for the trading of precious metals inside it. It is also known as a precious metals IRA. Next, some may say that gold is the purest form of legal tender, that it is durable, that it cannot be devalued by governments, that it is a true wealth preserver, and that its purchasing power has withstood the test of some 5,000 years of economic history. Again, this may only be hearsay, conjecture, and or may contain some empirical data. That said, clearly gold benefits in bad and uncertain economic times. Its value rises in such an environment. The following are typical situations in which gold performs well. Budget deficits, stock and bond market turmoil, bank failures, defaulted loans, weakness of the US dollar, inflation, ridiculously high oil prices, and war. Do any of these things sound familiar? Yup, we are smack dab in the middle of this storm. Keep in mind though, that as with anything that lacks contractual guarantees, one's money is not truly safe in gold. Such products are still subject to public opinion, consumer confidence, and hence market risk. You may invest in gold just about anywhere there is a brokerage firm that sells commodities because almost everyone is trying to jump in on the gold selling wagon. But beware. Remember when everyone was jumping in on the home loans wagon and how that ended up? There are a lot of scams out there. And though one might say, but aren't they regulated by the SEC? Yup, <laughs> just like Madoff was and so many others like him. Let me ask you, how many billions need to be lost and lives need to be ruined before someone polices the SEC? Just keep your eyes open, folks. That's all I can tell you. However, here is some good news. In 1929, the Dow Jones was at 381.2. And by 2005, it had only gained 13.3% over almost 70 years. In comparison, Barron's gold mining stock has outperformed the Dow Jones Industrial Average from 1920 to 2010 as you can see on this chart. Okay, so what type of gold should one purchase inside a gold IRA? Again, I cannot tell you, but I can tell you what the US government allows you to put in it. At this time, gold American Eagles and gold proof American Eagles are permitted inside gold IRAs. How does this process work? Okay, here's how to put gold in an IRA. In the year 1997, the Taxpayer Relief Act allowed precious metals to be added into IRA accounts. Many IRA account holders place gold in IRAs in order to achieve diversification of funds. Generally speaking, the price of gold will increase when stock prices drop. This can help create a balance in your portfolio's value in a bearish or weak stock market. Now here are some instructions. Find an IRA custodian and ask to set up a new gold silver IRA. Some plans may not have this capability. Remember to investigate and find a gold silver IRA plan that is administered by a custodian who has a lot of experience and a solid reputation for dealing in gold. You may add gold to all types of IRAs. Examples like traditional IRAs, Roth, SEP, Simple, and so on. Fill out and turn in paperwork to your new IRA custodian to open your gold-silver IRA account. 
You will also need to include a storage fee for the gold coins you will hold in your account. According to IRS rules, the gold must be stored at an approved depository, which is in a separate location from your IRA's custodian. If you are using an existing IRA, transfer the money from your existing IRA to fund the gold account. It's a good idea to ask a tax professional for help with rolling over funds if needed. And remember, CPAs only know about taxes and tax codes, not about investing. You also need to decide whether to buy gold coins, gold mining stock, or gold ETFs and instruct your IRA representative to make the purchase for you. Now for more about the types of gold and how they may be affected by government policy. The Gold American Eagles are bullion coins which are mass produced and the value of them is tied directly to the gold price. Remember, the price of gold fluctuates with market conditions, consumer perception, and basic supply and demand. And perhaps the biggest risk of them all is that by executive order by FDR in 1933, all gold and gold bullion coins are still subject to confiscation by the U.S. government during times of national crisis. Did you read what kind of times gold performs well in? <laughs> Would that be the same times that FDR's executive order allows the U.S. government to confiscate or uh, steal <laughs> your gold? Amazing. On the other hand, the U.S. Mint first created gold-proof American Eagles in 1986 and are produced in limited supply for a specific purpose of funding IRAs. Because they are scarcer than the aforementioned gold American Eagles, they cost more. And also, they outperform them by about one and a half to two times. A big plus for these coins is that they are exempt from FDR's 1933 executive order of confiscation. Hmm, really? Again, proof coins are exempt and they can be purchased at the United States Mint. Okay, so these coins are stored in a third-party administrator's storage facility as required by the U.S. government. These coins also come issued with a U.S. Mint Certificate of Authenticity and being backed by the U.S. government, they are accepted worldwide. Seriously though, one wonders if the same conditions that scare people into fleeing the dollar, namely lack of faith in the U.S. government and the dollar, if these conditions apply to these particular gold coins as well, one wonders what the point is of the purchase at all, wouldn't you say? It would seem that at best one would recover the cost of the intrinsic value of the gold itself in the worst of times. But that's it. And remember, it is not in your shoebox. It is at some other location. Also, remember, because these are qualified retirement accounts, if you wanted to actually take possession of your gold and put it into your shoebox and sit on it, the IRS gets involved and calls it a distribution and it is then subject to applicable penalties and taxes. Again, to avoid this, you must keep your gold in a government approved depository under the care of a custodian. You can think of a custodian as equivalent to the broker holding your retirement dollars until it is time to retire. Anyway, perhaps a gold Roth IRA would be a better choice, though there are limits on how much one can stuff in there. Unless, of course, you qualify for and wish to do a Roth conversion like I spoke about in one of my other professor -ed videos. There is much more that can be said about storage, buying, selling, and trading. But as mentioned in the beginning, this is not within the scope of this tutorial. Lastly, I will say this. If you are someone who likes risk instead of contractual guarantees that keep your money truly safe, then another thought might be to use the precious metal IRA to hold copper. 
Word has it on good authority that China is currently in possession of 40% of the world's copper. There must be a reason. Just food for thought. As a little side note for those really interested in playing with gold, you may look into this other nice alternative. ETFs, exchange traded funds. Most commodities focused ETFs follow a grantor trust or partnership product structure and are not registered under the Investment Company Act of 1940 like most equity and bond funds. Instead, many are registered under the Securities Act of 1933. The best and probably most noteworthy example is the SPDR Gold Trust. With over 30 billion in assets, GLD is the most popular single commodity ETF. GLD follows a grantor trust product structure and its share price is pegged to one-tenth the ounce price of gold bullion. Also, GLD is unique in that it does not use gold commodity futures, but instead, it actually holds physical gold bars in a secured vault. In contrast, because many commodities ETFs do not own the physical commodities, rather, futures or options on them instead, their tax treatment is very different as compared to a stock or bond ETF. Commodity ETFs that use futures contracts have their gains and losses taxed at 60% long-term and 40% short-term. That is to say, it creates a blended tax rate ceiling of 23% for investors in the highest tax bracket. Therefore, the best environment for commodity ETFs is inside a tax-sheltered account, like, yes, you got it, IRAs, Roth IRAs, and 401ks. And I have to insert here that if you have seen my other videos on professorit.com, I personally am strongly opposed to tax qualified accounts and I do not believe in the market for anything other than play money. For safe money, there are much better, sounder alternatives. This is Gregory Pavlidis for Professor.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.